This actually came. It had come after, you know, I was like four years outside of a foreclosure. Daddy, go lay down. Super go lay down on your bed. I wasn't really interested in buying another house, but I don't like renting because you can't like paint a wall or hang a picture or anything like that. Uh, Good guard dog, oh, huh? He probably sees the. Oh, yeah, well. I wanted a Great Dane, so you can't have those in rentals usually. And I was like, well, this situation will allow for that. So the idea was that I would take one year's worth of rent payments, which was about 800 to 900 bucks a month, and build a tiny house and then live in it for two years. That was my goal, and that way it would pay itself back. I've never worked on a construction project before, successfully at least. And I built this really horrid doghouse one time. But <laughs> I have a master's degree in architecture. I'm not licensed. This actually came because I was studying to take my licensing exams and you kind of realize how much you don't know. <laughs> so I was like, I need a project. I need a, a project with all the systems so that I can do wiring and plumbing and building and, and it'll help me with my job. Budget was my number one factor. My budget was actually $12,000 was the max I could spend, and I, I hit it with all of my appliances and everything. I recycled, reclaimed as much as I could. The lumber I got, I got a really good deal, and it was left over on an apartment complex. And it was almost exactly the right lumber list as what I needed to build this house. It took time. All you had to do was ask, you know, but it's, it's time or money. I spent a lot of time searching down good deals and approaching people. That's all reclaimed shipping pallets. <laughs> so I got two different big loads. One was a farm, one was a floor dealer, and they get material all the time, but they don't send back pallets, you know? So yeah, they're just like, take as many as you can. So it was awesome. Because that's a pretty big expense on a house, is the, the outside siding. Like this is one of the areas of a tiny house you have the opportunity to save money. And you can't do that on structure. You need to have a sound house, but finishes, this was free, but a lot of time to take apart and get ready to finish. <laughs> I have estimated the entire build took 900 to 1100 hours, and that's a ton because, gosh, these are 83 different shipping pallets. You know, to fit your budget, it's time or money. And I didn't have a plan totally worked out when, uh, because I, I was working on a budget, so you know the biggest expense is a trailer. And so I kind of had a general idea of what I wanted, and then I found a trailer and worked it to it. In Idaho, we have tons of gooseneck trailers, but not a lot of bumper poles, and so it's the deal I found. Most trailers that people use for tiny houses, they just attach to the bumper, the back of the truck, which is a bumper pole trailer. This one's a gooseneck trailer or fifth wheel trailer, which goes up and over and actually attaches over the axle of the truck. And the only reason I used it, it was the best deal on Craigslist. It was the first one I found that I was like, yeah, this one's structurally sound enough that it'll work. Now, can I build on it? Like, I've never seen anyone else do this, you know? And, and yeah, it's, it's nicer because you can actually put more weight up front than other ones because it's actually centered over the axle. So it worked out really well, but it, it obviously impacted the design decisions that I was making on the inside. It's the only reason I have a loft. I, I like the way it turned out. I like having like the kind of half loft. It was important that Denver was able to get up in the loft, my dog. But I was like, well, I, I can put a couple steps in there. It's not a ladder, you know, it's just some stairs. And so I did that and it works out. <laughs> I'm from Boise, so I didn't have a spot in mind when I started building. I kind of just took a leap of faith. I had a build site and then I was like, I'll figure it out. I was surprised how many options came up for parking. Not along the build. I had zero all the way right up until it was finished and people could see what they we're committing to, you know, that's a big deal. It just kind of worked out. I started dating a guy who had this empty lot and I was looking for a rental and I was like, how about that empty lot? Which, you know, we got to talking about and it led to dating because <laughs> we're both into this stuff, you know.
It was a little frightening at first. <laughs> I mean, this, this is not a legit situation right now. You're not in a backyard. I mean, you're in a front yard. <laughs> yeah, I'm exposed on all sides. <laughs> at any point, all of my neighbors can be like, I don't like you there and I have to move. And I kind of took the position that I'm going to let them know that. And if they're okay with it, we'll probably be okay. So I kind of tried to empower all the neighbors, let them know I'm a decent person. This is the situation. And if you ever have a problem with it, just let me know. And I've been very fortunate. Actually, this neighborhood loves me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's a little bit eclectic anyhow. I mean, you'll see a lot of different types of houses. So this is a really good neighborhood for it. I really didn't even know there was like such a thing as a tiny house movement. I started looking like people live on boats. I was like, people have done this. <laughs> this is cool. I can do that. So my clothes storage, these three drawers have most of my clothes. And then I've got, you know, hanging closet for coats and all of our coats are in there and dresses and stuff. It's the, the bottom two drawers are actually empty. You know, you think you need more, and honestly, I have clutter in here. <laughs> so yeah. like, I, I do painting and drawing and stuff, so I have all of my craft supplies and everything in there, too. That's fairly... And then I have a sewing machine. Like, I, I took all the curtains out, but I'd made all the curtains in here, and I, I make clothes occasionally. Uh, it's, it's in this bottom one. So I, I haven't done anything with it for a while. So I was like, oh, the bed goes right that's in front fine. of it, and that's fine. And I even have that whole space up there. That's all storage. That's all... Tupperwares and stuff that wow. I don't use. And I, I mean, I've got just stuff stacked up under here as a cabinet. This whole bookshelf actually slides out. It, it turns out I don't use that space very much, but there's a space back there that's about a foot wide. It, it's four feet deep and it's about seven feet high. Books, you know, it's important to have, you know, everything you need uh, or want, mm -hmm. not even necessarily need. I wanted to design it for two adults. And a, and a dog, that was what it was for. I didn't have an adult, so I had kind of some flex space because I didn't have a partner. And I was like, well, I don't even know what they want. I'll give them as much space as I have. So I have a ton of storage in here. And it turns out James and I are both pretty minimalistic. <laughs> the bed, it just made sense for it to go up there and it could be open. I didn't, I didn't have this rail on here for until after I had her. We did a co-sleeping up there. She, you know, kids move, so I didn't want her to crawl off the edge. So I just kind of designed this this rail. Instead of giving her a crib, I basically made our bed a giant crib. But before this was just open, and I'm excited to maybe open it up again later. But for now, this this is how it is, and it gives me this wall space. You know, I was concerned about living here solo at the time. You know, being single and everything. I was like, that's insane. <laughs> We have two and a half people, soon to be three people. <laughs> I really did think it was going to be a challenge, honestly, <laughs> and it's not. So then putting them side by side, I think it just worked out this way. I've rented apartments and they have really inefficient kitchens and I like to cook. So this is way more efficient than any kitchen that I've rented. <laughs> so the last one had literally this much counter space. There was like a, a stove, this fridge. So counter space was important. I like making cookies and casseroles, so I wanted an actual oven, which is awesome. I love this oven. It's, it's out of an old RV and it's like the best oven I've ever owned. It's like super accurate on the temperatures. And large enough to put in a turkey or something. Uh, not, not a turkey really, but we do a chicken. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, of course, dog food storage. Oh I, I need, I have a 150 pound dog. I, I put a hundred pounds of dog food in there for him. Then I kept open storage just to make it feel less like a cave. You know, when you have big cupboards poking out at you, it kind of makes this feel more narrow. And when I designed it, I didn't have all this crap, which is the baby sippies and bottles and things. <laughs> so it, it looked a little less cluttered. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I wanted a double basin sink. I didn't see a lot of tiny houses that had an actual kitchen sink at the time that I was building it. When you look at like galley style kitchen, it's really efficient, but it can be really narrow. So it made sense that I could put the bathroom right here. For some people that doesn't work because they are afraid that the bathroom's too close to where you prepare food. It's, it's okay. It's, it's really not a problem. I've got a door. Yeah, so this door, it's just a barn door. I just put together some plumbing hardware. That's my budget barn door hardware. I think it was all of like $12 or something, as opposed to like a couple hundred online. <laughs> it 
I was like, I'm not paying 200 bucks for this hardware. There's a better way to do this. And I saw somebody put a pocket door on casters, and I was like, well, what about that? If I just had something to hook it to the wall, it's good. It's got casters, so all the weight actually sits on the casters on the floor. The rail at the top just kind of holds it up, and it works well. Oh, this is like my favorite thing I like to show people. We made all these. I always wanted to learn to blow glass, and so I just paid for a class and took my brothers, and we each made one of these. In a traditional house, you have a builder build everything, everything's done up, and then you put your knickknacks in there, but it's kind of, your knickknack is part of your house at this point. There's plenty of craftsmanship details. Like, I tried to save some weight by doing these cupboards, and I did three-eighths instead of the standard uh, three quarters. They don't hold up over time, <laughs> and they warp and twist. And uh, I've I've had every intention of fixing those. And then I'm seven and a half months pregnant, and I'm tired, so I put it off. <laughs> they work. They're just not pretty. <laughs> So I have a washer dryer. I actually didn't use this much at all for the first year. And then I had a kid and this is 10% of my budget of this house because it's, you know, 960 bucks on, well, it's a $1,200 house, so a little less than 10. $11,416 was the final budget on my tiny house build, which the appliances are like $5,000, you know, of everything in here. So there's definitely room to, to save. This toilet is very expensive. My toilet is a $2,000 toilet, you know, and there, there's definitely different ways to do that. I wanted a toilet that looked normal so that people weren't like totally grossed out by my toilet. I wanted to be off grid still because it's hard to find a location to go if you need a septic hookup, especially, you know, three years ago. And then I wanted to live urban. So it's past government regulation testing to be a sanitary thing. That's why it's expensive. So it's just like any other composting toilet. You uh, put sawdust in it. It's a little more hands off. Uh, it's completely accessed from the outside of the house. So I don't have to like pull a drawer out through the house. It's, it's past places like Portland and, and Northern California have passed it as totally legit legal to use in any house. My particular town has not yet passed it, but I wanted to get that testing done anyways because I'm making the choice to be open about living tiny. If it ever became an issue, I can be like, no, it's accepted you know, in Portland, it's accepted here, it's accepted here, and maybe at least make a case for it being okay. Mm -hmm. This bathroom is, I think it's seven foot by three foot. It works. You know, this is totally unnecessary. I just found this sink and I was like, I like that sink, I'm gonna buy that. It's totally unnecessary because the kitchen sink is right outside the door. <laughs> so I picked my two heaviest things, which is the washer dryer and the shower, and I put them across from each other so they kind of balance each other, and then I centered them over the axles. This shower is all tile, so tiling's really heavy. It's not standard either to use tile. People are concerned, rightfully so, that it's gonna crack and pop out. In a, a tile situation like this, they do make flexible grouts. The weight is more of an issue than it, it popping out. Is that your bathtub? She, she bathes in, in a Tupperware, because, <laughs> you know what, it works. <laughs> and she likes it. And there's a bowl of dog water in the shower, too. <laughs> That's really a multi-purpose shower. Yeah. Multi-function. Everything's multi-purpose here. <laughs> yeah. So this is a 36 square foot addition. This used to be my patio. I, I didn't have kids when I designed the tiny house, but I had kind of the trailer I got had a dovetail on the back of it, which is kind of a slope to the back that lets you load equipment. I got it with every intention of cutting the dovetail off. Um, and then it got to that point and why? I could just leave it there and build up a patio or something over the back of it, knowing that I could enclose it and make it be a part of the living space. So it's a 36 square foot addition. I wanted it to look a little different than the rest of the house. So I did it in corrugated metal. Since we're having another kid, we're like, we're gonna do this bunk bed style. She sleeps on the bottom bunk right now. She likes to climb up to the top bunk, but we don't trust her. This is actually the co-sleeper I built her that used to be up in my bed space. So I just took it apart, repurposed it as the rails. Do you wanna go up there? Let's see. Show us. <laughs> Is your bed? 
<laughs> this is where she likes to eat breakfast right now. She like totally climbs up the ladder and sits and is like, okay, food. Like, come on, really? <laughs> Who was that? I think that anybody absolutely could build their own tiny house. But yeah, and then this one, we wanted her to be able to get in and out of there. You know, education is so available to anyone right now. It's a lot of, it's, you know, college kids, it's retired people, it's families. You know, there's a lot yeah. less families, because in all honesty, family is a little difficult sometimes, you know. Yeah. Kids take stuff and things, but it's not impossible by any means. It's not even hard. I just built some boxes for toy storage. They're just boxes on casters. They're nice, deep storage that she can throw everything in. <laughs> feed, feed, feed. And then I've got, you know, some storage up above for the little used stuff is up there. And then clothes storage. I have clothes storage for two, <laughs> two kids and one square foot. So I just built these things, you know, each kid has three of them and it's just closed. I'll let you sit right there and sit in the sink. <laughs> this is what we do. This is normal life. No, not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that I get to raise her this way. I appreciate more what it's doing for our family than what it's taking away. Good job. Come here. Whee! <laughs> I, I get to stay home and spend time with her, and I wouldn't be able to do that without this house, you know, at this point. Are you playing with your dog? My yeah. parents have a 5,000 square foot house. Like, I never liked that. I didn't like growing up in that environment, you know, like, go to your room and be isolated for three hours, you know. It's like this, you have the forced interactions that I think are really good for your mentality. I, I like that she's getting an alternative thing. I, I fear the potty training where she's like, where's the sawdust, you know? <laughs> She'll probably grow up fighting against this, you know? It's just the way you do it. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's, but she'll have this experience yeah. and... She'll know there's an alternative. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, yeah. she doesn't have to choose it and I, I'll support her in whatever she chooses. Yeah. It's exposure is key. And this lets us be exposed to a lot of different things. I mean, we can travel. Like, if we want to go to Seattle tomorrow, we can, you know? And that's not something everybody has. <laughs>